What's going on, you guys? Mr. Allen here with some application of quadratic functions. You're going to watch your calculator for this one. We've got Dwayne The Rock Johnson launches Kevin Hart off of a blob into a lake. You ever see those things where they you got a couple people that jump off a big thing, and pew, person shoots in the lake and you back. It's awesome. It's awesome. We had one once. Anywho, his height as a function of time can be modeled by h of t equals negative 16t squared plus 30t plus 5. Okay, so that would be Kevin Hart's height as a function of time. So we're going to graph this thing here in our calculator and try to answer these questions here. How high does Kevin Hart fly? How long until he splashes into the water? How long does it take for him to reach a max height, that max height there? How thick is the blob? Interesting. And what is the height after one second? Okay. And we can answer these in any order you want, um, but I like to survey all the questions first just to see if there's a strategic order I should do them in here in my calculator because the order in which they're asked isn't necessarily the most efficient. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is hit Y equals, and I'm going to clear out whatever is in there. Okay. Now I'm going to arrow all the way down to the bottom here. And I suggest you do the same because if you have anything in here, like a little negative sign, it's going to mess things up. Okay. So if there's anything in there, clear it out. Um, if any of your plots are on up here, make sure that you turn those off. If they're highlighted, that means that they are on right now. So arrow up, hit enter on it. It's off. You should be good to go. Okay. So I'm going to type this in negative 16 and we're just going to use X in our calculator here squared. That's over on the left hand side plus 30 X plus five. So this, if this is like the first time you've really started using this calculator for a graph, okay, um, it is a little intimidating at first. Your variable key is next to that green alpha key where it says X, T, theta, and those are the different default variables for different modes in the calculator. Ours is going to be X and here it's T. T is time. X is just our variable in the calculator. Now we can hit graph, okay, and yours might look different than mine. Mine does not look good at all. I just hit graph. And your window's probably different. So if it is, right, if, if it looks a little funky, let's all do this. Let's all, all together now, children, all together. We're going to hit Zoom, and then we're going to hit Standard, which is option six. So arrow all the way down, Standard. Okay, now I have this graph, and it might take yours a little bit longer to load. It's fast on the emulators on the, ca on the computer. I've got this hooked up um, to screen record it. Now, it looks like I can see most of this quadratic function, but I don't see the high point, which is... That's the first question. And I guess question C as well, how long does it take for him to reach that max height? So A and C are gonna play off that max. So let's adjust our window. There's different ways to do this. Some will choose to zoom out. I choose to go to window. And then I'm gonna arrow down to my Y max because I wanna see higher up. Um, and I'm just gonna guess, I'm gonna pick 20. I don't know if that's the best choice, but we'll see what happens. And okay, cool. I can see the high point. I can see my X intercepts. Those are all key features. Y intercept is also a key feature. Um, so let's do this. How long does it take, or how high does Kevin fly? Let's find our max height. So we're gonna hit second and then trace, and it's gonna bring up this calculate menu, menu here. And we're, you're gonna use that all the time for different things, okay? So I'm gonna arrow down to uh, maximum is what I want, right? So hit maximum. And then uh, let's see here, I want my left bound. What does that mean? Well, here's my max, right? So I'm going to go to the left of that. So I arrow a little bit to the left. I'm to the left of that perceived maximum. I hit enter. And now it asks me for my right bound. What you're doing is you're giving your calculator like a little window to work with. And then it's going to do a very accurate estimate of that actual maximum. Hit enter. And now it says to guess. I can either hit enter a sec or a third time here. Or I can arrow over closer to my max. Which is helpful if there's like multiple things going on. We only have one max. So you could have just hit enter. But I'll hit enter again now. And it says maximum okay that's important it says maximum it doesn't say guess anymore it says maximum it'll always give you x and y values but it will say maximum once you've done all those steps so my maximum here is 0.9374 and then the y value is 19.0625 so what's what well x is my t which is my time right so that's the time to get to that max height Ooh, that's this guy right here right how long does it take for him to reach his max height so that would be uh 0 0.937 seconds because it says 0.3 or sorry 0.9374 that nine afterwards would round that four up to a five but i would say anywhere from 0.937 seconds or you could even probably say 0.94 seconds either one of these is going to be okay a lot of teachers will just do two integer or sorry, two decimal places some will do three so either one of those is cool right we're rounding either way um so or all right 
Oh yeah, and how high does he fly? Well, that'd be my Y value because Y is my H of T, right? H, F of X, G of X, Y, H of T, those are all your Y's. So that's my Y value there, which would be 19.0625. So 19.1 feet or 19.06 feet. Either one's probably fine or just depends on what they ask you to round to. I didn't ask in here, so there we go. You can even put 19.0625. If they don't ask you what to round to, just put it all. All right, next one. How long till he splashes into the water? How thick is the blob? What is his height after one second? Let's just go, we'll do the rest of them in order. How long till he splashes into the water? Well, what's that part? That'd be my X intercept or my zero. All right, so we're gonna hit second calc again. So second trace, which, which gets me to my calculate menu. And this time I'm gonna do zero, which is option two. Zero, X intercept, uh, roots. They all mean slightly different things, but they all kind of refer to the same thing. It's where it crosses the X axis. So for this one, it's a little trickier to see the left bound and the right bound. So this is, oh, I can't even get close to my zero, but here I'm below it or to the right of my zero and here I'm to the left of my zero. So I'll hit enter here and it's easier to see with these vertical lines that they pop up. See how I hit enter and then I arrow to the right, hit enter, and now we have these vertical lines there that surround that X intercept. I can just hit enter now or I can arrow closer to it. I'll just hit enter and boom, it says zero and it says Y equals zero. So this would be, my um, amount of time, how long it takes till he splashes into the water. She so has like a, a 2.029, so 0.03 seconds. Make sure that you put um, those units there. I should have said that guy where um, height, height would be feet, feet, and then uh, time, seconds. All right, that sh I should have put that in the problem. I apologize. How? How informal of me. All right, I'll, I'll fix that next time. Okay, so anywho, 2.03 seconds till he splashes into the water. Now we wanna know um, the last two things. How thick is the blob and what is his height after one second? Well, how, how thick is the blob? That's what he's sitting on, right? And that's what he launches from. So at time zero, he's chilling on the blob. And then once the rock hits it, he shoots off, time starts. So at time zero, this is zero, that's zero plus five, that's gonna be my thickness of the blob, all right? So five feet when it's inflated would be my thickness of the blob. Some might re uh, refer to that as like the starting height of this projectile or whatever it is, like your start value because when time is zero, that would be the start, your y-intercept is your start, okay? Um, sometimes they ask you to like interpret the y-intercept in the context of the problem. Well, that would be that it's five feet is the thickness of the blob that he's sitting on before the rock launches or jumps on there and launches him into space. Well. 19.1 feet high. Okay, <laughs> last one. What is his height after one second? So once again, to do this, I can plug one in here and evaluate it by hand, but hey, I already got in the calculator, right? Let's hit second. Guess what? Trace. Once again, we can do value for this one. And I can just plug in one. That's it, right? Second, trace, value, plug in one. It says it right there. We got one comma 19. So for this one here, I'm gonna just write it here because I know this is gonna be off the board, uh, 19 feet after one second. So one second, yeah, it, I mean, that makes sense here because it took what? Almost one second to get to the max height just after that he's on his way back down. So that's why this is a little lower than his max height. That all makes sense. Cool. Well, now let's see if I can, I'm gonna tag Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Kevin Hart and say like, hey, can you guys make this happen? Can The Rock jump off of a big, tower onto a blob and launch Kevin Hart 19.1 feet into the air for a total flight time of 2.03 seconds before he splashes down um, and make sure that the blob is five feet thick when Kevin is sitting on it. Okay, perfect. That's awesome. That sounds great. I think it's very doable. We'll make it happen, but that's about it, you guys. Have a wonderful day and thank you for watching and uh, make sure you charge calculators because you can't use them if they ain't charged. See you later.